Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Italian Mocha Lover, which right now we're taking a look at, not a new focus, like usual, but looking at the battle for Italy, because I asked you guys yesterday, which way should we go? Should we go with the Japanese, or should we go with the Americans, or should we just become, you know, independent and say to everyone, bye-bye? So, uh, overall, there's quite a bit of support for me to go with the... OFN. So, what we're going to do, we're going to include more American diplomats, more maybe American corporations. We're not going to introduce protectionist measures, but criticize American capitalism, huh? Maybe we'll go with agreements with IBM, yes? Slightly more American, slightly more American for now. Let's see, let's let time go on just because, well, we got quite a few days for our focus to continue. The Northern Shield, not bad, I like the attack. Even though it's a Northern Shield, but you get more attack and Oh, armor defense, which makes, I guess, some sense. I think it was you. I think just more defensive capabilities, period, but that, maybe that's just me. Cool. Hope you guys are having a good day. We've got quite a few comments to go through. One of them says that, who leads San Marino as well as the Vatican? And there goes the GGR doing a whole lot of stuff. And look at that lag. So, the leader of San Marino is Leonid Susi Valli. If you'd like to read about him, go right ahead. And there he is. So let's see. Test our work. Don't mind if we do. Oh, let's close this up as well. Yeah, expendable points. Yeah, that's definitely not in the game yet. Um, I, we can't really click anything there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I really can't click anything there, but it is what it is. It is 1966. And so far, we still have 43% of the seats in Parliament. Not really worried about that, So, because there's not much to do there. So it is what it is. It goes, oh, awesome. I still got to place awesome. And now time for the Vatican City. Uh, the Pope John the Twenty Third, His Holiness. His name was Angelo Maria Roncalli. Mr. Pope, 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 ma'am. Cool. Anyway, let's take a look at our budget. Maybe we can cut down some debt. My favorite thing. Ah, <clears throat> and we shall begin this episode with no more debt. I love it. I think it's great. That's weird. The Greek state color is somewhat closer to the Levantine Confederation, which is still independent of us, which I don't necessarily agree with. But we do need to talk about this, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to finish this and get down to the world call as fast as possible. Uh, ooh, cut the red tape, though. Uh, there's so much I want to do, because we do need to do Mission to Budapest, Bucharest, and Bordeaux, just because those were some of the comments from yesterday's video as well, saying that we should get everyone into our lines as fast as possible just because of uh, the way Germany's acting, so actually might not be a bad idea. <sighs> Moral welfare, uh, I want to do this stuff, but maybe we can actually wait. Just because Italy answers, we can do that eventually, maintain hegemony, which sounds like we're probably going to have to go with an Italy answers, just because we're going to get involved with the world probably. Trade domination, huh? Arabian Nights, sounds very familiar. Hmm. Also, there's, there were comments regarding the the corruption here. Crackdown corruption, whether it's a Navy, Army, or Air Force. So it is what it is. But let's go ahead and do the Domus Maria Congress. Democrazia Cristiana has won Italy's first election since the end of fascism. Of course, now that the post-victory euphoria has subsided, the party must get to work and actually govern. Though naturally, the different factions in the party should have varying ideas on what the governing should entail. With this in mind, incoming Prime Minister Aldo Moro has called for the party to have a congress in Rome to determine the new government's path forward. Will Moro bow? to the conservative faction for the sake of electability, or will he push for a more radical program like the reformers desire? Even if that jeopardizes the government's prospects for the next election, Rome wasn't built in a single day. Japan wins the issue. Following the weeks of intense negotiations between Americans, Japanese, and Italian officials in Rome, we received word that the Italian government is receptive to the Japanese proposal at hand and will align themselves closer to the Empire of Japan on the current issue. Uh, okay. In Tokyo, Japanese diplomats breathe a sigh of relief as Italy draws one step closer to the sphere in their historic alliance, while the counterparts of the State Department in Washington curse under their breath at the setback. In Rome, government ministers nod solemnly for themselves, knowing that their decision will play a pivotal role in deciding the future of the Italian Empire for generations to come. The battle for Italy continues, as the OFA and co prosperity sphere await the next summons from Rome to discuss the next item on the agenda. Well, we did reversing autarky, we did strengthening Italy, opening the empire, politics of petrol, Doing that chords. Going nuclear? Joint access? British spies? I kind of want to do... I, I like all three of these. 
Mm, going nuclear. Joint exercises. I think going nuclear would probably be good just so it helps give us some sort of deterrence against the Germans. So kind of like that one. So let's choose that one. And closer to the rising sun. Which we didn't want to do, but okay. And I guess we'll go with expansion of mild investments. Because I'm not super gung-ho about nuclear technology right now. But hey, maybe it will be much more important later on. Edge detection, why not? And let's get through this focus, and then we'll decide what we're going to do next. we got a slightly more debt now, which sucks. And what can we choose? There goes Poland. Okay, so we can't choose either one of these. So we can choose one, two, or three. The new classroom's not bad. Uh, does this... This does not force you to do anything you don't want to do. So, okay. Encourage pluralism. I like more stability. Cinema industry. I like those max factories. Ooh, let's do democracy in the dark, just because we might get an event for this stuff up here to choose either walk the tightrope or tip the scales. So, our young democracy is best set by enemies on all sides, but none is as dangerous as the National Socialist Beast. The GGR looms from the north, threatened to swallow us once more into heck. We just recently managed to escape. We can only defend ourselves if we manage to form a strong and stable alliance with democratic nations, and for this, it's imperative that we start exerting what influence we have on all the countries bordering our sphere that have yet to choose sides, with particular attention to the two regional powers of Romania and Hungary, the Domus Maria Congress. Now that the post-victory euphoria has subsided, the Democrazia Christiana must actually begin the work of governing a country that has been steeped in fascism for decades. What's more, the problem with big town parties is that, that many different factions within the party have different ideas as to what the governing should entail. Realizing this, the incoming pres Prime Minister Aldo Moro, himself a progressive but also pragmatist, has called for a party congress at the Domus Maria Hotel in Rome to order, in order to, make, to determine how he will take the party forward into his new era for Italy. In the hotel's conference room, party leaders and officials bandy words as they make their case for why their vision for Italy is the best path path for the party, while Smoro looks on from the center of the front table, the frontman of the liberal conservative Dorotai faction, Mara Mariano Rumor and Emilio Colombo, speak at length about the need for unity and after the party must not rock the boat too much right off the bat. After all, the party wants to stay in government and Rome wasn't building in a day, to say nothing of the fact that many DC MPs in the DC voting base skew conservative. On the other side of the aisle, progressive firebrand and close confident of Moro, Aminatora Fanfani gives an impassioned sermon on the need for reform, now emphasizing the threat posed by Italy's ally turned enemy to the north. Italy must be strong and free, and there's no time for an incre incremental approach. As the speeches wind down, Morrill stands up, causing silence in the room, deep in thought, Morrill clears his throat, then turns and begins walking towards the table of progressive or Dorotai leader. Well, I have a feeling this is going to determine what path we choose for walk the tight rope or tip the scales, especially when this one says... Uh, unleash Fanfani, or Party of Catholics. Well, from my polling, what I asked you guys yesterday, it's all very divided. Like, there's support for uh, Sit With Nenny, as well as Biggest Tent Party, and the Party of Catholics a little bit, and Walk the Tightrope. So, um, honestly, it didn't come down to t the, the Tightrope or the Scales one. It came more... Oh, actually, hold on. I, I messed this up a little bit. People want, overall though, I will say like this, want me to go a little bit, actually there's equal support between Sit With Nenny and Tent, so I guess we could probably go with this one, the Progressive Firebrand for now maybe, so we'll try that, so I'm sorry if we can't go with the party, or actually, uh, we can't go with the party, which sucks, with Catholics, it is what it is, so we're going to go down this way just because there's more support over, really overall for Sit With Nenny. There's absolutely no support for Unleash Fanfani, but... There was more support with Sit With Nenny, so it is what it is. Um, I can't please everybody. I just, you know, I try my best, but like I said before, there goes the Kurtz. But, yep, I tried, but it is what it is. Obviously, I'm going to play Italy quite a few more times in the future. Italy can has a lot of potential to be really, really fun and exciting, even though it still needs a little bit more of a rework. But we all know that by now. We all know that by now. Good. I wonder how high our GDP can go. Hopefully we can get to like 100 million or 100 billion. We're already past 100 million, hopefully. But that'd be really cool if we can get at actually a little bit higher. In the meantime, I'm going to just do this as well. I'm going to, I'm going to do it in the areas that have 100%. So there you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, there goes the Netherlands. Good luck, guys. No one's going to come save you. <laughs> that might be scary, actually. Very good. Very good. Very good. My apologies about that, but apparently Dietzlin is now gone. Good job, Goring. Good job. And which now let's grab some more technology. 
and Light Drift Craft we're actually kind of doing okay on. Naval stuff, I'm not really too concerned about that. Let's see. Ooh, better artillery. And we're ready for the next focus. I guess we'll just go with the Progressive Firebrand, because we're here. Entire propaganda machine of the Initiativa Democratica as working at full power to sway the public opinion as many MPs as possible towards supporting the reforms of the agenda of the government. we got two choices on how to better secure our position. Amentora Fanfani has prepared a rather underhanded plan to force MPs to support us, or be forced to resign and forever be banned from any political role within the party and country. On the other hand, Petro Nenni has shown willingness to parlay with us and create a common pro program of progressively oriented reforms, making it easier for us to find a majority, but harder to regain in the rest of the conservative currents, which, you know, um, I just went along with whatever you guys suggested, so I personally probably would have gone down with a more, you know, conservative Catholic route, but hey, it is what it is. Oh, and that finishes up quickly. Nice. Oh, sit with Nenny. On these fine, fine. Mm -hmm. pluralism. We'll do that one. Decades of fascism has, ingra has ingrained into the people a fear that the secret police will come after them, even if they dare to criticize the government. Even under Siena's more moderate leadership, black shirts and secret services were still responsible for the many disappearances and harsh sentences for crimes against the state. Well, it may take years. If not decades to fully abandon this fear, we need to get started immediately. Under the government's sponsorship, newspapers and radio programs will be encouraged to hold political analyses and debates, giving people the soft nudge they need to start discussing once more about politics. After all, a democracy where the people don't care about their country's future is a doomed one. Of course, our directives will incentivize moderate ideas and debates, my apologies, which will just happen to coincide with the political program. Van Fee's choice. As Prime Minister Aldo Moro walked through the halls of the Palazzo Montecitorio, alongside his right-hand man, Armin... Armentore Fanfani, as Brau wrote as he contemplated the best path forward, and now that he decided to go in with all making Demo Democrazia Cristiana a party of change and reform, I'm telling you, Aldo, Fanfani said as he continued walking, you can trust me, I'll be able to get the conservatives to support our program in one way or another, you just want to give me some green light, and without restraints, I'll be able to herd them into supporting us by any means necessary. Perhaps more responded, but that will undoubtedly make it harder for our party to be rightly elected, if your plan of coercion imp implied expulsion from the party goes ahead. I want to keep this in-house as much as possible, too, but we must think of the future elections. Working with Nettie on a common reform program will certainly make it easier on the front. Although, come on, you and I both know that if we constantly fret about not rocking the boat for the sake of the next election, nothing will ever get done. We both know the threat from the North necessitates action now. Just give the word and I shall make it happen. Morrow's brow continued to furrow as he stopped walking to ponder Fanfani's words. Whilst Fanfani was certainly speaking for both minds, it was his duty as party leader to ensure his party's electoral success, just as it was his duty as prime minister to ensure Italy's future. Working with a Nenni, who has displayed openness to working with him, would perhaps be the best path for both DC and Italy. What to do, what to do, after several minutes and deep in thought, Moro turned to Fanfani and said to him, You have my blessing, we shall work with Nenny. Unleash him? Ah, we should work with Nenny, right? And that's what gets that done. If you'd like to read about this, go right ahead, so. Courage to split in the PSI. Decrease the unity of FD will go down. That's not bad. Listen to their demands? It's always good to listen to people. Well, usually. Maybe not always. Uh, I think we'll go with air superiority just because uh, we, don't have, we definitely won't be able to get air supremacy. I love supremacy. Signal companies? Sure. Why not? Oh, what, do we, what can we do here? The battle for Italy is still going on. Oh, I guess we... Already, okay, so when I did the fade and fade out, actually, I'll be honest here. Someone called me, and I did, apparently I didn't pause the game, so it just it went whatever way. Uh, as we can see, it really went towards America. <laughs> so I let just let it go by the way, so my apologies. So Investment in the Telesphere. Diplomatic Accords. Opening the Empire. I kind of don't mind trans-oceanic trade. Made in Italy. Um, let's go tourism. Why not? Nice. I'm choosing your investment. That's fine. We'll do a minimal. I don't really care about that one too much. I would like the high investment for the other stuff too. So, let's see. What do we have down here? Uh, as you see, I've actually reloaded the game completely. So, fund the project. We're still at 43%. And what do we want? Sudan? South Sudan? North Sudan? Let's do North Sudan. Improve Italy. That's not really going to help us with anything. Improve Egypt? I have a good feeling this is all going to go to the wayside fairly soon. High reserve taps. That's not... Doesn't matter. Kuwait? In Iraq? Has been fully developed. Oh, uh, let's let's do Iraq. Is that... They're, they're developed, but they can, they're not fully developed. Budget boost. The verdict says. Cut. Spend. Cut. Wow. Four billion. Seventy-five billion. Wow. 
Christian ideas in a secular state. The DC, as if the name wasn't eloquent enough, a profoundly Christian party after all. It carries the legacy of Don Luigi Storzo on the Church's social doctrine, elevating it into a philosophy of government. This, however, doesn't mean that we are de a denominational organization or intent to enforce the Church's rule or the state. Moral believes in a fully secular state, where everyone is free to practice his or her own religion without fear of persecution, where the Church is fully separated from the state and its agencies instead. The government's action shall naturally fall into the wider river of the Christian doctrine, rather than covering roads and cities and crosses and hymns to Jesus. We will follow the true essence of Christianity, which is love. You don't need to be a Christian to love thy neighbor and to be a proud and productive member of society. We will ensure that everyone, no matter their religion or origin, can live happily in Italy. Supposedly. An era of good feelings. It was an era of good feelings, the mayor said to one of the discussions, where Italians feel like they could exchange or change things for the better. Elena did not like the mayor very much, but she could agree with him on that. Ever since, she had gone round the building and roped in all the neighbors, the condi condominium B7 administration group had become the talk of the entire neighborhood. She'd always been outspoken, even as a girl, but only the past year or so had the neighbors been so as, become so as well. The group, composed mostly of the women living in the building, had been scorned at first by many husbands. Then the group organized a few lunches and saw the problem of waste disposal outside the condominium, convinced the owner to shell out money for maintenance on the property, and received the mayor of the district twice, so husbands stopped complaining. Elena knew that the changes had come over her friendly la her lady friends would neither said in a random. Even under Siano, they would not have dared raise such a fuss or involve themselves in politics, however, minor. With democracy, however, they had been free to take much of the everyday policy making into their own hands. There were still whispers in the neighboring buildings that she had nothing better to do with her time, but Elena didn't care. She discovered that organizing her peers gave her purpose, and she would not give it up no matter what anyone said. Maybe when the children were slightly older, who knows, but she could replace the district mayor and do his job better. Public administration needed people like her, after all. Now let's go and survey for a project. And test that'll work. Oh, we have more debt. I don't like that word. But, Iniciativa Democratica. Our current ID is one of the most progressive within the party, and as such, it is imperative that we never lose its support. Moto is holding important talks with Amentor Fanfi. Fanfani, among the most important members of the ID, regarding the expansion of the current, even among other factions of currents, there are men whose ideas closely resemble others, therefore it would be highly beneficial to introduce them into our group. To this end, the ID will be structured from a loose collection of people with similar views, to a party within the party, from its own representative organs and a newspaper, so that the current activities may be more incisive and gather more support amongst both the wider DC and people. Other new classroom, as young Pietro, uh, Petro, Pietro walked into his classroom on the first day of school year. He could not help but notice something different. The previous year, to say that classrooms had been shabby would have been very charitable. But now it wasn't though a metamorphosis had occurred. The room was spotless. The formerly bare bookshelves were now filled with books. Even the desks for pupils, which had been falling apart before, looked like they could actually support the weight of a child. Pietro walked up to the teacher's desk. Mr. Cerulli, he asked, where did all this come from? Mr. Cerulli beamed from ear to ear as he looked down at the young boy. Why, Pietro? It came from the Confederazione Italiana Sindicati Lavoratori. They've been doing a great campaign to provide underprivileged schools like ours with supplies they need to give young Italians like you the education you deserve. Where do you think your parents got their new shoes and books? They certainly couldn't afford to buy them themselves. Hmm. Pietro looked down at his shoes. It was true. The shoes were brand new, well made, and even so much stylish. Uh, considering his previous shoes had been falling to pieces at the seams, it was a most welcome surprise when his ecstatic parents had presented him with the new shoes. And the books in his backpack were certainly too expensive for his working class parents to afford on their own. The CISL did all this? Indeed, my boy, that's what motivated me to join the CIS CISL myself. I'm sure your parents feel much the same themselves. God bless the CISL. And what can we do? Anything else here that I really care about? Ah, yes. This stuff. Tourist regulations, huh? Atlantic agencies. Reciprocate Japanese goodwill. Rebuff American offers. Significantly decrease Japanese influence. Well, I'll just go this one then. There you go. We go slightly more that way. Whatever. And I'll save some more political power as well. Oh, wait. Yeah, I mean, we could use it, but we're already in the, kind of in the OFN sphere ish, slightly. And listen to their demands, probably. Yeah, why not? While not all reforms proposed by the Front Democratico are in line with our plans, some are too radical even for us. We can include the more acceptable ones into our ag agenda as a show of goodwill towards our erstwhile ally. The conservatives within the current may grumble, but in the end, this is the only way to keep the government cohesive and fully functional. Mostly, except that reforms involve protecting minority rights, establishing more subsidies for the poor, and overhauling parts of the territorial administration of the empire. Something which can be easily done, even though the belt is a bit tight due to our difficult financial situation. Really? Because we have no debt. I mean, we're doing quite as much, some might say. Bueno. So, hey, man, we got no... Well, you know, we got no debt. I mean, the GDP is slowly going to just keep going up and up and up and up. The static line of Catholic politics. Sunday is a real duel of disappointment for him now. 
Paolo's routine was known to all in the neighborhood. After looking at the, after the small garden he had improv, improvised with his wife beyond the house, he would go there to the morning mass before they parted ways, she to her friends in the grocery shops, and he to his at the small cafe in the church square. After speaking with them for a while, he would buy the two usual newspapers, goodbye pink, skip the side from behind the counter, and sit down absorbed in reading for the rest of the morning. He had struck, stuck to this routine for years, but things were no longer the same. The parish priest he remembered since his childhood was old and approaching senility. The poor man sometimes stopped confused in the middle of his sermons and seemed lost. His sermons used to rouse Paolo's faith, but now there were only the awkward silences until an altar boy led the old priest mercifully away. Paolo had expected, with the D.C.'s victory in the election, that politics would be made with the religious fervor he still carried in his heart. He voted for the D.C. because he believed a party of the real Italy. Italians raised, like him, in the bosom of Azione Cattolica, could carry the day, but every day now he wrote that Aldo Moro, the deceitful coward Moro, was working with agnostics and socialists. Today the paper spoke of the ID, an alliance Moro had just announced with the left of the party and whoever he carried with from him with the center. Paolo was angry not only at Moro, who had sabotaged Catholic politics, but the men and values in the party who had let him get away with it. He left the newspaper on the table and went back to, to his house. He had not given up on the D.C. yet. Who else could he vote for? But the fervor with which he had spoke for them in the past had withered away long ago. Poor Italy. Sounds like a lot of politics. And Rick Owens' issue. Um, if you like to read about this, this sounds like an issue that that pretty much always happens, whether you want to go with it, like what we did with the Japanese, and now this is the American version of it. If you like to read it, go right ahead. So, closer to the eagle, it is. And like I said earlier, by Bink, Bink, my cat Binky left the room. And he's going to go away and just kind of hang out. For now. Uh, it's 1966. Better guns! I love guns! More Berettas, please. Encourage us to put in the PSI. Just as we have our conservatives opposed to the alliance with the FD, the Fronte Democratico itself has its own radicals who think that we are too conservatives. While this notion is laughable at best, the PSIUP, the Partito Socialista Italiano de Unita Proletaria, is starting to split from the PSI, the Partito Socialista Italiano, and therefore from the coalition if they sign a pact with us. It's almost a pity for them that this is exactly what we want. Allying with an open and proud proletarian socialist party, our conservatives will begin a civil war. Allying with a reformist party once the PSIUP has succeeded? Much more feasible. Therefore, we're going to release a joint statement where, the, where Morrow and Nenny complement each other for the future alliance and slip some details of the new DC-sponsored reforms. This should bring the PSIUP to, to split in a rage, slightly weakening our ally, but strengthening our overall government. Oh, and we gotta do... Uh, pe petrol. Hmm, that, no, that just guarantees OFN, anyways, probably. Let's see. Investment in. The, let's do it. Hmm. I'm going to diplomatic accords because I don't know if this is going to be the right thing to do, but I want to get in the OFN as fast as possible, especially since Germany is going crazy with Goring. And I like how they spell accords. Accords. I like that there's, like, the commas there or something. Ooh, oh, there goes Crimea. A high-level investment for this. All right, let's see. Rebuff, diplomacy, increasing our independence. We're really not looking for independence at all, are we? Uh, let's rebuff them. I want to see what happens. So it barely does anything there, so it's fine, whatever. Don't really care too much. Ah, encourage the split in the rattling of sabers. Our context in the new in the army speak of a worried meeting between generals where the words communist and army purge have been repeated more than once. While it's not our intention, and neither is Nenny, some MPs from his coalition have actually expressed their intention of cleansing the army of fascist remnants. While the army would never try a coup, after all, they are too loyal to the king, and the king is on our side. Many in our party have connections within the army and would try to unplug our government before it can fall to the temptation. Moro scheduled a meeting with Nenny where he'll remind him that moderation is the key to healthy politics, and surely people are talking about army purges are not helping our government either. Either those rowdy elements are forced into silence, or there may be a big problem within the coalition. Division in labor, though. Guido looked up, vaguely amused, and squinted at the couple of men of opposite. The noise of the factory lines barely allowed you to be heard if you do not raise your voice, but it was unmistakable. Tano and Federico were arguing again, of course. Even now, Federico's face grew red. The problem with Moro is if he doesn't stand for anything. Tano was saying, louder than necessary to be heard, and if someone tells him something, one day he does it. If someone tells him something else, he changes his mind. It's insufferable. He has no principles. Federico folded his arms over his chest. There was something defensive in his gesture. We're both socialists, Tano, but you know in your head that the dem demo... Cristania have done good for us. To this, Tanya's eyes widened. Guido could see it from where he stood. The Democrats have done good for themselves. Tano was speaking at the top of his voice. The problem with socialists like you is you're only too willing to bend over for the establishment. To the other man, face redder still, shouted something about bending over for his colleague's wife. 
Guido shook his head and lowered his eyes to work. He was a DC voter himself and he had a lot of respect for Moro. The man did what needed to be done to keep the peace. If something Guido identified with, which was why he'd never start an argument over politics, he didn't have to raise his eyes and note that what happened next. The two men, or the men next to Tano and Federico, were physically separating them. <laughs> there was a lot of excited shouting from all around, and one of the supervisors was running towards him. Get out of here, both of you! This comes out of your wages! That's why you don't bring up politics at work. You're bringing it up in the shadows of where you work, and then plot from there? Don't quote me on that. Uh, sure, why not? Centro Sinistra Organico. Finally, the talks are over, and we could probably say that our center-left coalition, the Centro Sinistra Organico, is wrapped up and ready to go. The program has been finalized, and the parliamentary agenda is being min minutially drawn so that none have suspicion of being sidelined in favor of the other. With the large numbers, we can safely approve our reforms without fear of Franchi Torat. Territory. The BN and the PSA might scream for the extremist positions, but that's all they can do to disturb us. Who knows? Perhaps it's the start of something more than a mere alliance of convenience. Only time and politics will tell. The elector, the men present, waited for the door to be locked before they began to speak. Represented among them was the top brass of Italy, with leading figures from all branches of the armed forces. The subject of discussion was a sheet of paper hand-delivered by a trusted go-between for the, the DC. There were only a few words printed on it. Wait, we will have our day. We, you will be contacted when anything changes. Once he read it aloud and looked around the room, the general folded the paper and placed it into his pocket. There was silence for some time. I knew Julio to be more decisive, he said Said one of the men, finally. His voice was burdened and his met with murmured assent. Yet we must wait, as he said. We must act correctly or we do not act at all. And even the military cannot move unless the politics is in place. To this, more murmurs, and not at all of them assent. One of the men suggested sending a reply to the DC office le the letter it arrived from, but the first one to speak shook his head. We must trust that our friends know what they are doing. He said finally, Do you think any of us must enjoy this being insulted every day by a government which splits in spits in Italy's face? But we must endure it. And once we have endured enough, then, then and only then we can proceed. The room surged somewhat placated. The man who'd spoken seemed to have swayed the gathering, but even he had his doubts. He hoped that Giulio would send another letter with a different message. We'll move when things fall into place. Uh oh. That doesn't sound good. Oh, there goes. Oh boy. Boy, that is not good. We must prepare ourselves. So we have this group, and then enact the agenda, the speech. Well, if that's going the way it is. I would like to exert control. Oh, we'll do the cinema. Cinecita, uh, as founded during fashion, is perhaps the last true cinema industry in Europe, with German films falling under a more category of shameless propaganda, and the only one capable of at least competing with Hollywood. Since relationships between our country and both the U.S. and Japan are at least cordial, our films have been, the potential to be exported to the entire world. However, with the end of fascism, lots of production, especially with historical filo Roman ones, have been discontinued, putting thousands of jobs at risk. Our government will give incentives to Cinecita, and many studios to begin new film production, especially the genres which will sell the most worldwide. It also bring a triple benefit, as it will at the same time Time, create jobs for the people, bringing revenue to the state coffers, and export Italian beauty and culture to the world. Siak si I need to learn Italian someday. Uh, we can do this again because we, we might as well. Send on, boys. Send on, boys. The U.S. of A. I love the U.S. of A. Not just because, oh, look, I'm American, but hey, look, 47%. Because USA is best in the world? Oh, yeah, you betcha. Anyways, uh, coalition is stable. So the front of Democratico is stable, the moderate wing. Stable, conservative wing, led by the liberal wing of the D.C. Italy chooses her future. Over the past few weeks, both the OFN and the co-prosperity sphere were entangled in a bitter fight of the heart of the most beautiful maiden of Europe, that sweet, sweet Italian empire. Tears were shed, bouquets and garlands were thrown, but in the end, both suitors received the cold shoulder for now. The lady just isn't ready to commit. No, she needs to find some time to find herself and forge her own path for a while. The decision to abstain from choosing a side may not be as expected unexpected as initially assumed. Both the co-prosperity sphere and the OFN seem extraordinarily interested in bringing Italy to their side, so holding out just might move one or the two sides to come up with a better deal. Few love triangles end up with a clear winner, but this one might just result in Italy getting the upper hand. We make our own destiny. What the heck? We make our own destiny. I don't think this was part of the agreement. Uh, we saw that we're heavily, heavily leaning towards this. Okay, good. I'm like, oh, at first I thought like they're talking about us like going independent. I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we're too far down deep and in, entrenched into the American booty to get out of here, but today will be remembered throughout history as the day of Italian Empire officially became a member of the OFM. Though Italy was wooed by both the OFM and the co-prosperity sphere, it was ultimately felt that the OFM was the best partner for Italy's interests. Italy's gained a powerful ally against any possible German aggression, and the free world makes a dramatic comeback on the very doorstep of the German Reich. America was named after an Italian after all. Let's see. Oh, a couple comments. Let's see. I already checked out the leaders of the San Marino and the Vatican. Get Hungary and Romania on her side. I have not actually played Star Wars Empire War. Someone did ask me that comment. Star Wars Empire War, I have never played. 
I should play sometime. But we'll start control over the IRI next. The IRI is the most important player in the Italian economy, acting as the main channel for the state incentives to Italian industries as such. It's imperative that we put loyal and trusted men in key positions, where they will ensure that the IRI pursues the economic path that we're going to set for the country, rather than resisting it after all. Japan is a perfect example of what happens when the economy and government clash, and we surely don't want it to be the next country with buildings waiting for the turn to jump off the building. At least not yet. The cinema industry. Young Giuseppe could ha scarcely, hardly believe it. Ever since his childhood, he'd been brought up on the great uh, Cinecita films, just like Umberto D, Le Notte Blanche, and Bicycle Thieves. And ever since childhood, he had dreamt of making films for Cinecita himself. Oh, Giuseppe, where's my coffee? <gasps> Muovo viti. Or vitil. Giuseppe jolted out of his daydream as a sharp voice of Federico Fellini, Fellini struck across the studio. Yeah, yes, sir, coming right up. Giuseppe had never thought this day would come, that he would be working in the same studio as the great director Federico Fellini. And it uh, should be a great film. Uh, Satirico Colony. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, alongside such great actresses as Salvo Randone, it was truly a dream come true. While it was true that Giuseppe was mostly just fetching coffee and doing other grunt work. That would not last forever. He was young and his time would come. For now, he was just happy to be able to work alongside some directors and directors whom he idolized on films that he adorned. Even if he was just a peon for now, it was just a toe in the door. Made possible by the subsidies to Cinecita. If they had not had those subsidies, would they have the money to hire them? Siak. I don't know. Alright, at this point, we joined the OFM. The free world just got a little bit bigger. And I would like to do this stuff, but... Hmm... Monthly poverty change gets a little better, which is actually pretty good. More to the pickle power. Um, establish a regione. Ooh, keep it vague. Short term solutions. Tighten the belts. Everything will be fine. I, 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 I do sort of want to go and like do the investigate the army, just because it seems like there's there's potential for a lot of corruption here. So, but in the meantime, I guess maybe we should go with mission to Budapest. Just because that is a close country closest to us, since Croatia is technically firmly, firmly under us. But happy 1967, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Let's go with... Ooh, that's 28 days. The world calls. I would like to do that, too. There's so much I want to do, but we just don't have time for all this. Ah, I'm going to ignore the right side for now, though. Um, enact the agenda. Ooh... We do get more political power, but that doesn't really mean too much. How, how long? Uh, I, let's finish this side first, though, just because it's it's short. It's shorter. We can do it. It's a little shorter. Actually, this will do it first. It's more GDP growth. Morals come up with a plan to increase budget funds without putting too much of a strain on our already sensible debt. The government will issue a new category of very small public bonds whose value should be around 500 lira so that anyone, even the poor, may help the country. As an added benefit, we shall state that such bonds can be freely exchanged as if they were actual money. This way, they'll, they'll circulate alongside traditional money rather than simply rest until they can be exacted, achieving the double result of giving us more money to spend and generate more trade and revenue. Let's boost cut good. How are we looking here? We're building a lot of roads, which is actually pretty nice. And not too bad. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I've got to pause it for this. Oh, boy. Oh, no, 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 no. This is too much. You do not believe in military factories. You shall build for the people, the Italian colonizers down here. Actually, are these... How, how Italianized is this place? Is it literally just another colony? Because that would be really cool if we had a mechanic of trying to italicize this area more. Fun to work. That would be good. Ah, 313 factories, not bad. And after this, we shall do uh, enact the agenda. With the legislature in full swing, the government's agenda seeing its first reforms approved. As a show of goodwill towards the FD, we'll start by establishing the foundation of a proper welfare system for the poor and downtrodden. We'll also be costly for our finances. We can't deny that there's a dire need for these subsidies, especially since the economic crisis that followed the Atlantaropa disaster. Gosh darn Germans. It's still plaguing the country with its last ugly tendrils. Moto and Denny will hold a joint prof. Congress press conference to illustrate the new welfare system and how it will help out those who still live without a job, further increasing our government's popularity in the eyes of the common people. That's the work. The new banknotes. Here's your change for a thousand lira. Signor, thank you and have a great day. Mario looked down at the change the cashier handed him, which was only 200 lira banknotes. Two 500 lira banknotes. His brow could not help but for all as he put his notes in his wallet. Mario, Mario was an economist. He had already been skeptical about the government's plan to introduce new denominations of 500 lira banknotes when the government had announced a plan. He claimed that this plan would only lead to, at best, further inflating the already inflated lira. At worst, he claimed, it could lead to an economic bubble, and all bubbles must eventually burst. Nevertheless, in spite of the skepticism expressed by economists such as Mario, the government decided to go ahead with the plan and print new banknotes. 
Now that they were being widely circulated, it seems certain that they were here to stay and the later would be further inflated. Whilst it increased spending and consumption, how could, could it continue like this forever? Mao did not want a bubble. He honestly hoped he was wrong and that this project would be a success, like the government claimed, but he could not shake the feeling that this was an inflating a bubble and that the bubble would inevitably bop. Hopefully this will not lead to economic hardships, yes. More money for the people will definitely not lead to the bubble. Just ask modern day politics. We'll see what happens. I can't wait to see what happens, actually. I can't wait for crises to happen. Oh, hey, look at that GDP growth. 2.4%. Beautiful. Long-term plans. The IRI is the most important tool I to dispose of to influence Italy's economy and ensure that smaller business falls in line with the proposed economic reforms with its gargantuan budget and its connections in every possible facet of the economy. The IRI is sorely needed more now than ever to finally drop a comprehensive long-term oriented strategy to bring the Italian economy completely out of stagnation. Our Minister for the Economy of Finance has scheduled a series of regular meetings with the IRI's Board of Directors so that this immensely complex plan can be actually drawn up, one day becoming reality. Should it actually work, its benefits for the economy will be immense, creating jobs for the people and badly needed revenue for the state. The speech. Papa, Papa, I want to watch Prov Provlino. Provlino will have to wait, Maria, Angela said to the young girl. Prime Minister Moro is giving me a spe uh, speech in a few minutes. Shh, it's about to start. Maria pouted. Politics was dreadfully boring to a young child, but she reluctantly sat down on the sofa between her parents as on the TV, Aldo Moro walked up to the podium. But today would be no ordinary speech. Aldo Moro was no stranger to political theater, but today he was more animated, determined, and resolute than anyone had ever seen him before. One could feel the passion emanating from the TV as he called for Italy to achieve its rightful greatness. Not merely on the world stage, but at home too. Italy must be a country that Italians are proud to call home. The status quo had, got, had to go, and a new greater Italy must rise. Angelo and his wife, Allegra. I like that name. Could not help but be transfixed and captivated by Moro's performance. Wide-eyed, they could not even tear their gaze away from the TV for a fraction of a second. Even little Maria could not, could not but help but be taken a little bit taken in by it all, even if she would rather be watching Provolino. Aldo Moro was clearly clearly in it to win it. As Moro concluded his seminal speech, Angela looked to Allegra. Well, dear, I think we know who we're going to vote for. Change is a coming. And we must survey for a projecto. Long-term plans, rise of the cooperative, I want better monthly poverty change. Cooperative has been a staple of the leftist narrative for the economy. In co cooperative, there's no owner as the workers themselves own the business or organize it according to their own desires and plans, dividing the earnings equally between work every worker. And it is one of the less radical reforms proposed by the FD. The government has decided to draft laws which officially recognize cooperatives, giving them incentives and tax exemptions to help them establish their starting presence in the Italian economy. While it's unlikely cooperatives will supplant the traditional business model, it would be a way to ensure better equality and fair competition in the cutthroat world of the economic world. Very cool. And actually, do we have any benefits from our national spirits? King Umberto, Ascent Navy, which probably have to perform, declining trade, which really sucks still, but it'll go away eventually, hopefully. And then we have the shield, or yeah, the shield, of course, and the IRI control. I love more max factories, and we're in the OFN. Look at that. Stability, research speed, Research facilities, monthly change, nice. Poverty change, nuclear stock. <gasps> I love the OFN. Look at that, we're actually going nuclear. Well, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, poverty rate's going up by quite a bit. I like this. I like this a lot, my friends. Establish the reg Regioni. After Italy was united, it was decided to keep the administrative units small, establishing only the Comuni, cities and province. Small unions of Comuni, due to the lack of uprising from those still loyal to the old pre-unitary states. Now that Italy is properly united and none wish to secede to form the old Grand Duchy of Tus Tuscany or other nonsensical nations, we can finally implement this final stage of the administration. What do you mean? We gotta get the Grand Duchy of Tuscany back in here. The Regioni uh, will encompass provinces united by a common heritage and ensure that the government's policies can be applied uniformly without the need to micromanage hundreds of small bodies. Of course, I love the small bodies. This will entail a certain degree of decentralization as well as the Regioni will have minor legislative powers of their own, something which may prove greatly which may greatly enrage the more authoritarian force found within the parliament, but is an overall sound proposal, especially in the light of the future reforms we have in mind. A very bueno. I'm sorry, my voice is just turning into a, the stereotypical American trying to do Italian accents, which is, I'm sure, failing horrendously right now. So I apologize for it, but I'm getting excited with this. 
uh, an empowered parliament. Even though Italy has become a proper democracy, the parliament's powers are still vaguely defined, especially in the light of the government's powers still granted by the old fascist laws. Our allies in the FDU wish to properly and officially state that the, Italy is a parliamentary democracy, and that it is the parliament, and not the government, to decide the country's policies. Since this is exactly what we wanted, and the king is only too happy to pro promulgate such a law, we will immediately send the draft to his majesty for a preliminary evaluation, and then the votations will begin in the parliament. With this, with this reform, the last vestiges of fascism will be blown away by the winds of democracy. Make it more political power. Establishment of the Regioni. In a nation great and expansive as Italia, one of the great concerns is one that may drive and be may be drive and boring. The matter of administration. After the unification of Italy in 1861, the administrative divisions were kept small, consisting of comuni, municipalities, and provinces, groups of comuni. This is all well and good, but a glorious nation has grown tremendously since then. This has necessitated more comuni and provinces, and has led to the national government having to micromanage hundreds of division, different divisions, which is frankly nightmarish to administer. Hence the introduction of the D.C. government of a new administrative division, the Regioni. Very good. These Regioni will consist of groupings of provinces that share a common history or heritage. It will decentralize a small amount of power from the national government to the Regioni, but will min minimize micromanagement and allow the government's laws to be applied uniformly. It's not quite full-on federalism, but by devolving some powers to the Regioni, it will strengthen our country. Strengthen our country, my apologies. Of course, not everyone is happy about this. Some more authoritarian-minded forces in Parliament are outraged at the idea of devolving even the tiniest bit of power to regional governments. The Bloci Nacional, in particular, besides themselves and their leader Almiranta, filibustering Parliament for a record eight consecutive hours. He makes outrageous claims that it will lead to... Italy's disintegration into the Grand Duchy of Tuscany or the Serene Republic of Venice or what have you, but he is wrong in this as this is the best unity for Italy. It is for the best in which we shall next do further develop Oman. Nothing bad will happen in Oman ever. Well, we just finished up the last focus. Look at that. Long term efforts. Parliamentary power. Not bad. And of course, we have the OFN and the IRI control. Very bueno, bueno, bueno. And unity is strength. In 1920, democracy fell apart because of the democratic forces that were too divided to offer joint resistance against Hail Mussolini's march on Rome. We were too busy backstabbing each other, and even experienced politicians such as Gilotti thought they could use fascists to further their own goals. Of course, they back this backfired spectacularly. Now, however, we have learned the harsh lesson with 40 years of dictatorship, and we won't make the same mistake twice. It is a burden of good men and women to always stand vigilant against those who would take away their freedom and their loved ones. Therefore, all Italians who truly believe in democracy should unite under a government to safely transition towards true democratic rule and forever banish the taint of fascism so that it never comes back to haunt our existence as it did before. More monthly population and better ideology to defense. Oh, moro, 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 moro. So up next, oh, we're going to grab some signal companies. It is 67, of course, so we're looking pretty good. That's a little bit ahead of time. Uh, let's grab some of this. Infiltration specialization. Very nice, very nice, very nice. And what's the next focus we shall do? We could do Lega Sabatini. Ooh, less income rate. Oh, I don't like that. Low taxation. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just beeline down this path. Uh screw the other nations for now. For now. Just because I wanna I wanna at least finish off one path of the focus tree before things go crazy. While Germany stagnates, it's clear by the day that the new frontier for any advanced nation lies in technological innovation, computers, TVs, and other things, which 20 years ago would have been labeled as wizardry. Now are seen as in every field, from the military to entertainment. Competition among the great nations is merciless, and the cutting edge always moves forward. If we want to remain a world power, we must establish a core Italian innovation industry which doesn't depend on foreign help or knowledge to develop new technologies. Armando Sabatini, an MP which strongly supports innovation and industrialization, has drafted a proposal for tax cuts and other incentives for industries willing to invest in research, development, and in innovation in the fields of mechanics, engineering, and electronics. As this coincides with our plans for the economy, we will immediately prioritize it in our parliamentary agenda. More political power, stability, construction speed, factory output, we lose quite a bit of income, but because we've done so well, it could be a lot worse. It could be actually a lot, 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 lot worse. Uh, anything up here regarding 47% still? Not bad. No, no. Good. And we have 16 days left, so I'm not too worried about that. Well, the region's been fully developed in the Persian Gulf. That's nice. Ooh, wait, we can still invest prospect in Greece, but they're not with us. Screw it. We're going to invade them anyways. All right. After that, we shall do electrify the state. Uh, oh, more cost. But more taxable population, academic research, and poverty changes go up. More daily political power, stability, public education with subsidized higher education. 10 million in the debt toll, but that is okay for now. We can we can deal with that. Helicopters. Uh, meh. 
more area stuff. Eh, it doesn't really matter. Basic jet strategic bombers, because why not? A piano de sanal per la instruction. While reforma gentiles generally viewed one of the few good things done by the fascists, dramatically increasing alphabetization, especially among the lower classes, there's still large room for improvement. With the steady increase in demand for qualified workers and researchers, is no longer enough to ensure elementary instruction to farmers and workers' sons. Instead, we will desperately need people to attend superior schools and universities so that they may further our quest for innovation. What is simply impossible to solve our problems with a snap of the fingers, we can do it is to plan for the long term. Our piano de sanal par la instruction. The 10 year instruction plans will set up milestones punctuated by interlocking reforms if everything goes according to plan. 10 years from now, we should have fully functional school systems with increasing higher education or instruction rates. Not education, but instruction. Abolish Metayaga. The Mesadraya is an ancient contract between the landowner and the farmer where the farmer grants the latter the right to cultivate the field in exchange for half the harvest. While well, all is good when the harvest is abundant, there, when there is droughts or storms and the harvest is ruined, some farmers starve. Our modern society cannot stand this cursed remnant of feudalism, and such our Minister of Agriculture has drafted a reform to abolish Metayaga, transforming it automatically into agricultural rent, both helping the poor families and punishing those landowners who exploit their workers. Cut, cut, or spends, cut, whatever it is. More GDP, 80 million, not bad. Alright, let's go ahead and fund the project again. Thank you very much, as we read the next focus. Prevent financial bleeding? Sure. While the winds of democracy blow throughout Italy, there are many who profiteered from the past regime who are afraid that we will take the ill-gained money. They are right. While we promised Tiano we wouldn't punish fascists for merely being fascists, we will still prosecute all corrupt officers who took money from the state. Of course, many of them are already planning to send their capital outside Italy. Our agents in Switzerland and the Caribbean speak of hurried contacts between former fascist officers and banks who accept unspecified sums of money in anonymous accounts. It's almost a pity that tomorrow morning the government will approve a decree which will make it illegal to move capital superior to 100,000 lira per week. And punish punishes all banks which refuse to comply with hefty fines. The banquet. Come one, come all, come to the village banquet. All are welcome. Giovanni was greeting from ear to ear as a steel of villagers congregated at the many tables in the village square. As he was observing the preparations, a young boy approached him. Signor, the boy asked, why are we having this feast? Giovanni continued to beam as he knelt and next to the young boy. Why, my lad, haven't you heard? We're celebrating now that the government has abolished Metiaga. We're not free men. No more sharecropping. We can keep our own produce. We own our land, and it's all thanks to the government. Now take a seat and celebrate, as he ushered the child to the table. Giovanni had been a long been a farmer in the Calabrian village of Stilo. Long had he slaved away under the Metiaga system, being forced to give his hard-grown crops to a landlord in exchange for the privilege of being able to use their land. He had never dreamt that this day would come, the day where this, this accursed system would be abolished, and that he could keep his own crops grow on his own, grown on his own land, which is great. As he sat down at the head of the table, ready to dig into a succulent meal, he made sure to remember who it was who had made this happen. May God bless the government. Ah, let's eat, shall we? And electrify the state or electrificate the state. While the Pianura, Padana, and the most essential it Italy are fully electrified, there's still some small, small mountain towns and villages where people still use candles. Also, there's a problem of bringing up to standard the embryonial power lines and the territories we've conquered after the war. To this end, we all have established uh, ENEL, the Ente Nacional Energia Electrica, as in it's to them to establish electro hydroelectric plants in the Alps and the Alpinini, which will provide pro and produce power for the respective regions and give public incentives to those Dalmatian and Albanian industries, often subsidized by the ENEL itself, which will invest in new power lines for their own lands. Which will be a great, great thing, um, thing, thing, thing. Oh, good. Cut down. No debt here. Wait, look at that. Hold my bad word. We were like 2.4. It went up by 7%. 7% growth. Oh, good. God. I love Italy. I love the LFN. Oh, it's so good. I love unity of strength. Oh, my goodness. 9.4%. We were at 1.9 at the beginning of this. Ah, it's happening. I'm too excited for this. Lega Mariotti. Is that a hotel? The Marriott Hotel? Huh. With the constant expansion of the healthcare system, we prepared a draft which will recognize each hospital as a public entity in its own right, with standardized roles and command structures. The Lega Mariotti will also grant incentives and tax cuts to those industries who sell medical supplies at a discount pace or price, and to all people who donate money to build, renovate, or expand hospital wings. While it is still a distant dream, one day every city, town, or village throughout the empire will have at least a medic granting health and a bit of happiness. To all. Uh, interceptor spiders, we don't believe in strategic bombers here right now, so. Offensive area denial. Infantry anti air, very, very good. And as well as what? What do you know? Armor? Skirts? I love the armor placement. The calculated armor placements, I should say, really. 
Uh, and protect Italian businesses. So this one, the Lega, will, let's see, more political power, monthly population, stability, war, war support. Cost goes up even more, but we get even better monthly change for poverty. I love it. Not there to be light, the Alpine village of Arco was about to be changed forever. Matteo, Matteo, have you heard what they just put in the village square? The young Matteo turned around as his friend Isadora ran over to him with a massive grin on her face. No, what are you talking about, Isadora? The young girl's grin widened further. Come with me, she said as she grabbed Matteo's hand and pulled him along to the village square as the sun started its descent below the horizon. As they watched the square, Matteo noticed a new addition. Around the square, there was thin pillars, each one with a great orb at the top. Well, those pillars look nice, Isadora. Was it really worth dragging me here for? They don't even seem too special. Just wait a few minutes, Isadora said as her grin refused to subside, as the sun continued its slow descent. Matteo sat on a bench next to his friend, wondering what on earth could it be this special. After about ten minutes of waiting, something truly wondrous happened. The orbs at the top of the pillars suddenly lit up. Young Matteo felt almost out of his bench as he looked with his jaw agape. Isadora, what the heck just happened? Isadora's grin was from ear to ear at this point. Isn't it amazing the grown-up said this was called electricity? I don't really get it, but isn't this cool? Matteo didn't respond. He just stared in wonder at the glowing orbs. I've never seen anything like this. Glowing orbs. And we must protect Ital Italian businesses. While the government strongly believes in the tr free trade, Moro isn't so foolish as to think that other countries won't try to suffocate our nascent advanced industry in the cradle. To avoid unpleasant incidents, the Ministry of Industry and Trade has drafted a series of decrees which will both protect the industry from aggressive competition and ensure our own competitiveness in the world market. A tax cuts and public incentives will ensure our businesses will be will better shoulder the difficulties of foreign dumping and artificially low prices, while a policy of limitations and bans will prevent unscrupulous businessmen from acquiring Italian businesses and forcibly expatriate them. Ooh, good. More research speed. So we go to free trade. And, okay, so not bad. Minus, oh, okay, now it's pretty bad. Minus almost 5 billion. Almost 5 billion. At least the growth is looking okay. And we should do an Italy, new Italy before the world. It's taking time and effort. It's cost us friends and allies. And we're almost lost everything more than once. But finally, the finish line is within sight. It is no longer a brutal dictatorship, but a shining example of democracy and cooperation. Even the fact that the last Duce ensured uh, a bloodless transition to free and democratic elections is proof of the Italian way, where even the most hated enemies worthy of being treated as an honored guest, and even the deepest grievances and vendettas can be solved with diplomacy and soft words rather than rattling sabers and the firing of guns. With the young democracy stable and vibrant with participation, we are ready to face the world head on, together with nations like, with the likes of the USA and Japan, unafraid of competition, and certain of our inner strengths and unique capabilities. Truly, we are people of scientists and explorers, conquerors and merchants, but more than anything, we are the Italian people. Viva l'Italia. Viva la democrazia. Viva il re. Cool. Awesome. Budget. What are we going to do here? 47%. It's apparently updated weekly, so nothing's happening in the government, which actually is probably a good thing. Albania. Algeria. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. Let's do them because it deserves it. It's developed now with further developments available. Is that it? Wow, that sucks. Alright, so now that we finish this part of the tree, I'm feeling quite good about this. We've already gone down this way already. I would like to go down here, but I think we're doing okay for now. So, and this doesn't help us that much more. Actually, GDP growth is not bad. Ties to the OFN. Yeah, we gotta go with that one. Inroads to Asia, made in Italy. Yeah, I'd like to do this. But I think it's time for us to do Mission to Budapest. Hungary is one is the perfect example of how taking advantage of your neighbor's weakness will, in the end, come back to bite you. After almost tripling its territory with the German backing at the expense of Romania and Yugoslavia, everything backfired spectacularly as soon as our wreck became un unable to protect them. What remains now is a shell of a proud nation, isolated both diplomatically and economically on another brink of total breakdown. This, however, presents a great opportunity to consolidate our eastern border against German expansionism. If we manage to convince the Hungarians to restore at least a semblance of democracy and help their economy to recover, we could gain a precious and steadfast ally, especially considering their now burned hatred towards Germany. Which is a good thing. Cut the debt. England was at war, and I will blaze once more, and never mind, they're, they're done. Okay. Anyone who saw that on the wall knew that they were going to die anyways. Ah, I love building more roads. Now we just need more civilian factories. Oh, look at that. Yes. Even in our puppets who don't really like us that much. They still get it too. Abu Dhabi. Mission to Budapest, the rightful heir. Hungary's current government, led by Regent Bela Imredi, after the death of his predecessor, Mikulos Horthy, is a failed dictatorship, holding itself together only by a sheer refusal to back down due to the fear of their imminent punishment. Despite the regime's apparent stability in Budapest, terrorists and the partisans control the countryside, and the German population plots to rejoin the follow them. It's only a matter of time before the country collapses into anarchy. In this political chaos, however, there is a hope for stability. 
Istvan Horthy, the son of the previous regent, is well respected of the by the population, and his moderate views, which, with enough time and convincing, could easily turn into a newfound love for democracy. We should covertly fund the son of the admiral without a navy and ensure that he comes out of the imminent uh, showdown on top. Still 67, uh, air doctrine is coming along. Actually, can we do... We can't do both, right? Oh, we can't do both, okay. We must do both, why not? Who cares? And light aircraft is looking so good. Heavy aircraft looking okay. Spy planes? Eh, we'll do it anyways, because we can. Why not? Uh, let's see, any other comments? So, okay, so you guys recommended with this corruption thing, if we actually are able to get to it, investigate the Navy, because Air Force is okay, from what you guys said. It might be the Army, but investigate the Navy. That's probably true, just because that's probably the largest branch we have. Let's see. We and someone recommended that we fix the race issue, so we're gonna forget about women, and we're gonna focus on race. And next time, focus and try to get to, to join the co-prosperity sphere, like I said earlier. So it is what it is. The mission to Budapest, despite the war with Romania, massive economic mismanagement, and ethnic tensions, the Hungarian capital of Budapest has survived in all of its beauty. And in the years Hungary's entry into the pact, with all erosions of Italian influence that followed, and then Hungary's abrupt exit from the alliance, a number of Italian businessmen and power brokers remained in the city, albeit operating at a far lower level. Now these men, resilient enough to survive the harassment of the Volksbund and the cold short of the government, should be the new germ of Italy's newfound influence in Budapest. The first matter of business, naturally, is to reach out to those exemplary Italians and entice them to cooperate. Surely, uh, those surely solid patriots are all. These men will be encouraged by a simple promise. Should Hungary become a friend of the Italian Empire, they will be well positioned to displace the German business establishment and become the new masters of the Hungarian economy. To those, to these sweeteners, we must look to the Hungarians as well. The Emirati regime, even as it despises the Germans, is not inclined to cooperate with the newly democratic powers such as Italy, which will have to be sly in our efforts, working to bolster the Hungarian economy whilst under undermining the government. If all goes well, Germany's former underlings shall find themselves under new administration, Hungary, Hungarian democracy shall flourish under our protection. Anything else here? Uh, no and no. And that's a good thing. Mm, Oman. Uh, yes, we shall touch o Oman. And, oh, fun the project. I thought I looked up here and it didn't say anything. Alright then, 75% of the way done, not bad. And buy Hungarian grain. Hungary's main export consists of its grain, with Alex Commissariat at Ukraine supplying food to the entire unity pact. Our sphere being entirely self-sufficient in terms of agricultural needs, and Hungary being landlocked, and thus unable to export its harvest to other continents. No one buys anything from the Danubian country with predictable effects on the economy. Should we start buying Hungarian grain in bulk, this would greatly help the nation in its roads towards economic recovery, and bring it much closer to us. Of course, we will drop a strong hint that only a democratic government could help enjoy this type of help, of course. Very good. And we should probably test the project. Oh, a little bit of lag, and what's going on? Not sure, and test the... Actually, is... is nope, okay, so that's... Okay, so we're okay now. Um, Shorter's here, which means Goring failed very early on, actually, in his plot to kill everyone, so... Spend, cut, slash it down. Oh, no, we still have debt! Oh, no, 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 not that D word! Oh, no, 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 Again, trying to raise our poverty level really sucks at... at Compare when you you know, compare it to, you know, debt. Oh, meeting with Istvan, which would be a good thing. Istvan Horthy walked like a military man, back straight, head raised with firm eye contact. As soon as he entered the room, the deputy consul knew he was Italy's man. The conversation they would have over the next few hours made this entirely certain. The sons of Miklos Horthy was an enemy of the Nazis, and everyone knew it. The Ger Germans despised him for his well-publicized views on the Jewish question, but as a former regent's son, he was too popular to attack openly. The man was no liberal democrat, of course, but he was the best candidate to enact the destruction of the National Socialism in Hungary, and to do so without bringing in about the societal collapse. Oh, he's right here, the kingdom. The deputy consul also has some conditions for Italian assistance. Should Istvan become regent, the Italian government would expect a promise of democratization to be overseen by Rome directly. Every milestone met in this process would be renewed or, or rewarded with further economic and military cooperation. And naturally, this conversation never occurred. It would be preferable that the Hungarians believe their favorite son had won out on his own. Istvan looked back at him, bemused, with the conditions which were set out. He laughed now, switching from Hungarian to a heavily accented Italian. Where do I sign? We should do the Volksbund problem. The Volksbund der Deutschen Ungarn, or People's Organization of the Germans in Hungary, represents the interests of the German nationals living in Hungary, a far from small and very powerful minority. While they've always longed to rejoin the Greater Reich, possibly even with their entire province, their operations have greatly intensified in the last few years and slowly but steadily destabilizing the government. We should send our agents to investigate the Volksbund and find out the reason for the sudden surge in activities. Should it turn out, as we already suspect, that the Reich is funneling funds towards them, it would greatly help us in bringing Hungary within our sphere of influence. The sale of Hungarian grain. Reminel Schellner, 
uh, Schneller, yeah, turned towards the camera and smiled briefly whilst it flashed once and then again. The cotton me minister's face twitched slightly. As soon as the camera was lowered, he brought on an end to the handshake, apparently peering darkly at his interco interlocutor. The other man, an Italian businessman who had long-standing ties in Hungary, had in the past weeks become a representative of the Italian government in Budapest. His grin remained, and the minister forced himself to make some strange small talk. After a few minutes of no trite nonsense, Reminel Schneller excused himself. Government business called, he insisted, barely attempting to make the lie sound believable. The minister entered his office and locked the door behind him. In normal circumstances, today's events would have been a victory for any economy or economic minister. The Italians had pledged to buy up Hungarian grain in bulk, without pressing their advantage too thoroughly, and in doing so had offered a lifeline to the Hungarian economy. A gosh darn shame that the circumstances were not normal. Uh, the dude had clawed himself into power as a friend of the Germans. After his country had left the pact, he had stayed in the cabin only through the lack of a successor, and today his job forced him to take hands with the enemy. His mind raced, soon Bello would soon call to consult with him. The minister would be resolute. The Italians wants to own us, he would say, and we cannot let them. Grain is a political matter. All right, very nice, very nice. 83 billion, not bad, and we're doing the Volksbund problem already, in which we shall probably defend the Danube. Just as the ancient Limes Danubianum of Roman memory was the first bastion against the barbarian hordes, today the Danube shall be the first trench of democracy against the fascist menace. We'll start funding propaganda depicting the Germans as the barbarians of old, and on enslaving Hungary to their advantage, and Italy as a benevolent ally willing to protect the Hungarian people against the savage hordes. As the population starts to look more and more uh, towards Istvan Horthy's moderate regime as the one who goes to save the country, we should let everyone know that our help will only go towards the country already on the path towards democracy. The propaganda should do the rest, and a new regime in the Gulf, an example from one of Italy's leading newspapers. In what was perhaps a first in modern history, a colonial possession and the major of the major European empires was given independence and self-rule with no bloodshed at all. Across the world, nations and their territories looked on with wide eyes, and some in concern and fear, others with joy and hope rekindled. In the darkness of an example, it could be now shown as a bright light to all those who could see the dreams of conquered peoples fulfilled. Of course, some were less than enthused. The Great German Reich, uh, the Greater German Reich, and the, German, and the Japanese Empire, likely fearful of their own subjects being stirred to action, heavily suppress the news, and in rare cases where they actually did publicly acknowledge it, were openly scornful. In Italy, however, news was greeted with a good deal of positivity from most quarters, both with the FDDC, hailing Matai as a great statesman who secured the best possible deal for both the Gulf and the motherland. Beyond response was overall less than enthused, but this was tempered by the feelings of some party leaders that this action would be, in the long run, preventing a waste of resources and putting down uprisings and strife. Even before Duce Siano was quoted in the newspapers expressing support for the newly created United Emirates and hoping for a long-lasting and fruitful relationship between the two peoples and nations. The seeds of the friendship seem to have already been planted in the fact, with many deals remaining in place to allow Italy access to the Gulf's resources while providing protection for the UAE against its neighbors. Pledging to repay the generosity shown to it by its former suzerain, the UAE is bestowed to the former governor and current ENI chairman, Matai, its highest hour honors as the beginning of its show of gratitude. Quite interesting. The UAE exists. Zaid bin Sultan I Nayan. Cool. Deal with Italy. Extra trade. Nice. Abu Dhabi Blitz. Nice. Dubai Electrified. The Oil Cup and Colonial Government. I love it. The Volksbund problem. But we must, of course, defend the Danube. Now it is 67. It's almost 68. Almost happy 1968, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. But the German also. The Volksbund had never attempted to hide its presence in Budapest, but the giant swastika door knocker struck Bianchi as particularly ostentatious. He'd been sitting in the building across the street for some months now, sitting through God knows how many discussions of German business interest. Ever so often, the bad word Italians were mentioned, and all those hours became worth it. Oh, there's Babylon. No, thank you. From the reports and gathered by Bianchi or Bianchi and others, it was clear that the Germans were planning something. They'd been receiving funds from Germania for an unspecified period of time. Bianchi guessed it was a number of years from the context of the discussions, and mentions of Hungarian military and government personnel were becoming more frequent. Bianchi was paid to listen to reports, not make political judgments, but he knew, as he did every agent he worked with, that Italy would have to move quickly to push its interest in Hungary. To fail to do so would invite the Volksbund to take a far greater role in the governance of Hungary and killing any remaining hope from Hungarian diplomacy. The German Ulster must be excised. Heirs of Babylon. Uh, oh, actually, this is this happens every campaign. If you'd like to read about it, go right ahead. But this is such a childish fantasy. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah. I, actually, this is... Reading through this is not bad. Yeah, I think this is pretty normal, yeah. So, if you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. And what a childish fantasy. 
pro-democratic propaganda with Horty's tacit approval. We've started a strong diplomatic offensive against the ruling regime, accusing it of weakening Hungary with its incompetence and paranoia. The late region's son has quickly realized or quickly seized the chance and has further attacked his rival, also dropping hints to the democratic supporters that while not immediately should he be installed as regent, he would be eventually or he would eventually restore democracy one step at a time. Of course, this has enraged the officially recognized government, who is starting to feel threatened by our initiative, but Bella Emredi is too weak to actually do anything more than complaining, which is a good thing for us. Research will be done within three weeks for the next thing, and it's not looking too bad. How is construction looking? Pretty bueno, I'd say. Pretty darn bueno, especially since we're improving the infrastructure down here too, and then even more infrastructure at home. Actually, we probably should be building infrastructure at home first, but A, I don't really care. It is what it is. It'll get done eventually. Stockpile-wise, how are we doing? We're doing pretty well. Pretty awesome on stockpiles, except for like close air support and such. Actually, how are tanks? We got 430 in the reserve. Not bad. Very good. Oh, that's good for Romania. Popular change in democratic stuff. But let's go shared industrial research. Hungary had a rather well-developed industry right after the war, of course. The economic downturn reduced everything to ashes, and now a few small obsolete factories located in the Budapest area are everything that remains, by selling the modern machinery at discount price. We will greatly help Hungary in its quest for recovery, and even more importantly, secure the support of the industrial workers. Uh, if you'd like to read about the decrease in poverty, please go right ahead. This happens every single campaign. Oh, maybe not every single campaign, but it's pretty good, so if you'd like to read it, go right ahead. A toast to our economists. Of course, we will make sure to heavily publicize the event so, the, so as to bring even more support towards us and Istvan Horthy, and hint that, should the government experience a sudden and totally spontaneous change towards democratic values, more help will surely come. Ah, rolling thinner. Toast to our economists. Beautiful, my friends. In 11 days, we'll have the next research done as well. Let's grab improved jet strategic bombers, but we're also going to grab some improved anti tank equi equipment. That's a fun little project. And then probably test our work. 79% is not bad. Oh, Germany. I think I'm playing this goring sometime. I'm not sure how I'd actually be able to play and win as them. Because how, you can't take over America playing as, you know, goring because then you have World War Three, which is fun and all, but sometimes you don't want to kill everyone. Sometimes you really do. But you can't always do that. All right, next. What are we going to do? Uh, 47%, of course, still. Finish off working Iraq. So Iraq has been fully developed. Nice. Improved jet tactical bombers. Oh, dam is finished. Happy 1968. Great year. Well, I got a lot of research done too. Improved aerial fueling. Not a bad thing. All right. So, oh, we were doing this, weren't we? I kind of forgot about this a little bit. Uh, cryptology. Who's next? Ah, Burgundy. Makes sense. Nope. Very, very good. And we'll do a shared industrial research. Muy bueno, I would say. Uh, technology will be done, oh, not very soon-ish. Do that, do that. We want to build, 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 build until we have nothing else to build. And our hat in the ring, the time has come. The men and women of Hungary have enough of Bella Emredi and his dysfunctional regime. And the looks boon intensifying their efforts to undermine the very fabric of the nation. There's no more room for words. It's Don Horthy has sent word to us that in a few days... He will rally the people and strike at the government with his supporters with an army. Should we help him succeed, he has promised to slowly bring the country to full democratization. If you'd like to read about British Army professionalism, please go right ahead. It's a good thing for all of us. The SIM operatives we have sent months ago have confirmed that the change is in the air, and the Prime Minister has authorized the operation. Our agents will further intensify the propaganda against the regime and will help provide to democratic supporters with light sabotage to police and army structures. Not enough to actually cause victims, but still enough to delay any kind of rep repression until the coup succeeds. We won't get a second attempt. It's now or never, ever, ever. Not bad. That construction is looking just beautiful. I love it, love it, love it, love it. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're like 12, 3.75 going on at all times. Cutting down that debt is a great thing to do. We're almost at 85 billion. And how is Russia looking right now? Uh, Siberian oh, Black League, Sovereignty, these guys not killing each other, yep. Ah, computerized stuff. Very good. Hat in the ring, and next up we shall do uh, Romania, just because they boarded us. I like Bordeaux, but I think it's probably more important to do M Mission to Bucharest. Romania is the strongest Eastern European state, having greatly expanded after the last war. They took advantage of Germany's weakness following its economic crash, to retake all of their lost territories and then some from Hungary and Bulgaria, re-establishing their power and regaining their honor, but it cost them all economic ties with Germany in the process, with predictable consequences for Romania's fragile economy. After young King Michael took power from Ion Antonescu's Iron Guard, the country has experienced a normalization of politics, which we can exploit in our favor. A diplomatic Commission should immediately be sent to Bucharest to discuss the terms of closer relationships between our countries, especially against the German aggressor. 
quite the aggressive nation, aren't they? And in about less than a week, we'll have point air defenses, which would be nice. I love construction stuff. Oh, you're Slugart. Oh, oh, they're killing each other. Oh, wait, did they rebel? Wait, what happened there? Okay, it has collapsed authority. Oh, that's so sad. That is so sad. Yazov, if only you could have done well there. Oh, we'll go with. There we go. That's some big sadness, not gonna lie. That's some seriously big sadness. Siano's still there. We have anyone else? Siano. Up, oh, and they're just popping out. Yep, he's falling apart. Ansk is still the capital. I'd hate to be in what was Vorkut at one point, but hey, whatever. Mission to Bucharest. Yes, please. You get more political power. Yes, very good. And then we shall have uh, some of this to do as well, but we have enough political power. Prospect fire current leaders. Special forces. Very nice, very nice. Anything up here? Nope. And then, actually. And let's just get this next one done. There you go. Service for our project. Good. Good. Basic supply plans, because we can. And then. In two days. Which will be good. Let's go and do some more stuff down here. Let's see. Finish off working Oman. Sounds good to me. We're finishing off a lot of stuff here. I like it. I like this. Testing a project. Survey for a project. And... Make sure you have everything else. Renovating the land. Nice. Mission to Bucharest will be followed up with... E&I prospecting. Why not? Romania is still as rich in oil as it was during the war. It had been Romanian oil that allowed the Germans' war machine, and our own too, to keep marching into Russia. However, now that the oil remains untapped with the economic crisis that followed the country's breakup with the Reich, there are no investors willing to keep the oil extraction facilities working. And that's where we come in. Our state-owned ENI is the largest oil company in the world. It'll be a travel to finance a thorough prospecting campaign across Romania, finding the best places to establish a new ENI subsidiary dedicated to extracting oil in the Ploesti oil fields in nearby lands. Of course, this will bring the Romanians even closer to us, and may even get us some nice little revenue. And right now, let's take a look with this. Oh, look at them! That's Hungary. Let's see. Hungary is an associate of the Italian nation. Oh, I love it. You're going to be with us whether you like it or not. Bella Emredi. Beautiful. Italian investments, not bad. They have against a German giant, which is good. Strength in defenses, which is very good. Der Volksbund. Suffocated economy. And a, a, a word in Hungary that I don't really know how to pronounce. I'm not even going to try for that one, too. Uh, let's grab some better guns. Ah, uh, Beretta, yes. Ah, uh, my Beretta. I love Beretta. Oh, it's so good. Cut down that debt. We don't believe in that D-word. The mission to Bucharest. The Italian embassy in Bucharest was a small palace in the center of the city. Though well kept and uh, <clears throat> by, patrolled by a small garrison from Italy, it showed as everything in Romania these days. The passing of time with a bit of plaster falling and some ivy growing on the walls, giving it an air of placid laziness. Until a, week, a few weeks ago, the most activity one could see there was a few Italian expatriates visiting the embassy for documents or the annual courtesy visit from the Romanian government or Romanian minister for foreign affairs. Now everything has changed. The entire building has been re renovated by a cadre of architects. Colorful Carrara marbles shine on the new monumental stairway and in the graceful columns supporting the neoclassical facade. Even the inside bus has been, or inside has been completely renovated, and great mahogany furniture supporting sporting those intricate wooden mosaics so loved by Charles Albert. Embellished the official meeting rooms, while in the corridors, precious glass vases from Murano speak out from equally valuable showcases. Even the personnel has been overhauled, with more than 40 new diplomatic officials being admitted, which some are economic, military, and political attaches, and a cadre of bureaucrats and entrepreneurs. The Italian embassy in Bucharest is now a shining beacon of beauty and efficiency in the beleaguered East, and if any, everything as it should, soon will bring light to all of Romania. Italy shows as a magnificent. That's fun to work. 83% is doing great. I do feel like they were doing a little bit better in this campaign than I did with the scores of the route, so it's feeling pretty good. Let's prospect in Croatia, which will do not very much. Yeah. That's what we kind of figured. Reopen the Italian Cultural Institute. If we have enough time, I want to fish off of Romania. I'm going to ignore France, and I want to maybe do some of this. Or actually, maybe we'll go down here, since we're already down here already. Liberal victory in Canada. 20 days is quite a bit, so... We open the Italian Cultural Institutes. The cultural bond that links us to our Romanian brothers goes far as the Roman conquest of Dacia almost two millennia ago. Ever since then, the Romanian culture has been a beacon of Latin heritage between the Slavic ethnicities, and we should show our fondness by reopening the Instituti di Cultura Italiana, established by the fascist regime so that Romanian students could study Italian culture and Italian experts and historians could explore the Romanian unique traditions and language. The first grand reopening will see our ministers for cultural affairs sign a treaty of mutual friendship, which, oh, what a coincidence, mentions 
mentions the necessity to join forces and prevent the Germanic culture from expanding far beyond its natural borders. Uh, I think we could all agree that we should contain the <clears throat> the barbarian Germanic uh, warlords to the north. Or warlower for now. Because Shona has decided to usurp Goring, the fat man. That chunky man. The man with an unending appetite. Support Romanian democracy? Oh, pretty to bombers. Not bad. Um, well, we're done there for now. Let's grab some of this stuff then. Support Open 6. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And then we shall invite Michael to Rome. King Michael of Romania is a courageous monarch who has been able to retake power from the fascist dictatorship, much like Umberto II did in Italy. Though the peculiarities of the Romanian politics prevented an agreement like the one stipulated between our king and Siano, and royal rules restored through a coup today. Romania is an authoritarian state with the king holding the last say on all matters, though he has proved to be competent and moderate in his rule, he is still de facto an absolute monarch. Umberto II has expressed his wish to meet with Michael and officially invite him to Rome, as suggested by our ministers for foreign affairs, or... The king has agreed to try and convince Michael to slowly leave behind the autocratic regime and gradually embrace freedom. After all, we've managed to transform Italy into a thriving democracy, so why shouldn't they be able to as well? Let's go and improve Italy so maybe some more. Now I'll do Egypt. Improve Egypt for now because we might not always have them. Spoilers, we might lose Egypt. But at this point, if you're this deep into the campaign, you probably know that Egypt isn't for this world under us. Which is quite disappointing, but it is what it is. Economic cooperations. The Germans will not be pleased. We don't care about the Germans. Ooh, actually we get more political power that way. Ooh, support Romanian democracy. King Michael's agreed with the suggestions and begin a serious process of democratization within the country. Slowly but steadily, new parties are being formed. And the road towards true free elections lies open. It's only a matter of time before Romania becomes a democracy not only in name. However, there are those both inside and outside the country who plot against our younger brothers. The Iron Guard still plans to take, retake power from the legitimate government. And the Germans are surely helping them one way or another. We should support the Romanian authorities to, by ensuring none tries to accept this new gradual balance. We get more stability and political power. I, I'll do this one first than the other one just because I like this a little bit more. Moro, Canarvo, Canvaro, uh, Presbitero... Siano, Siano, Enrico La Marmora, Girolamo Baldessera. I obviously, as I said before, don't speak Italian. <laughs> hey, 87 billion dollars, that's pretty nice. Alright, so let's take a Oh, we should probably. Ooh, just in case. Can we train our soldiers some more? Oh, uh, you guys could definitely use some more training. I would like a little bit more army XP, actually. So, you guys, you're 18 combo with. We need to boost you guys up. Alpini, not bad. I mean, we're probably not going to get into any sort of war. Uh, I, I would like to make our divisions better. Not bigger, just better. I've already read about the next focus anyway, so... Unless this one's really, really good. SIM agents. Eh, we can wait. Address the German threat. Non aggression pact with the Kingdom of Romania. Not bad. Uh, when's the next technology done? Oh, a little more than two weeks. That's not too bad. Really, really, really not too bad. We could get more fuel. Actually, we're structuring our navy. We're probably... No, we're not. We're just trying to build up... Well, a little bit we are. Wow, two carriers? Jeez. That's really good. Um, actually, once these guys link up, I'm just... Oh, I would like to combine something else. Is there a fleet that has just nothing but screens? Because those 12 ships need something. Oh, someone's, something's lagging. Uh, no? Uh, yeah, this is all nothing but screens. There we go. That should definitely make things a little better. Uh, you guys go there, too. Support Romanian democracy. Don't mind if we do. And invite Michael to Rome. And then we will, in a week, be able to do quick reaction groups with economic cooperation plans. There's only so much we can exchange among each other. The Italian industries can sell Romanian advanced machinery and precision equipment to drastically improve Romanian manufacturing output and quality, and our friends in Bucharest can start selling their much-needed raw materials. Copper, iron, oil, uranium, especially the latter two. Our ministers for economic and financial affairs will meet shortly to drop a comprehensive list of trade uh, age volations and prospective mutual investments we should, that will be examined by our parliament shortly it should bring in to an increase in not only our economic power but also our diplomatic influence over the country muy bueno as they might say in Spain but not Italy uh, let's take a look here test our work that's good both of these are very good 47% nothing's changing there prospect in North Sudan because we can Yemen I, we're doing really we're doing so well not investing in anybody except ourselves that we're actually getting all these done this is actually really cool I'm not sure if this gives us any benefit at all, but we're actually doing relatively okay, which I do like. So, that's actually really awesome. In five days, we'll have that one done too. 
which would be great. So after a basic spy plane, can we do this one? It didn't really matter to me. Uh, yeah, improved spy plane. Let's actually have... Okay, not bad. Very cool, very cool. And invite Michael to Rome, economic cooperation plans. There's almost so much we can exchange amongst each other. The Italian industries, of course. I think I've already read this. Yes, I did. I just read this. What's wrong with me? I'm ready to keep moving forward. I'm ready to just keep going on and on and on. If you're still watching, thank you very much for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. I mean, we're already past an hour, almost like an hour 20 or something like that. So if you're still watching, I really do appreciate that you guys are watching still. The king with me with uh, the meeting with King Mikhail. Before we read that, let's see. Cut down the debt. No debt here. The Kiranal shine from the tip of its bells to the foundation of its fortified walls. It had been so long since the last visit from a monarch. The last had been the King Edward of England in 1949. It had been uh, been quite a dull meeting. With well, the relationships between Italy and the Unity Pact already strained, ballets, chamberlains, butlers, maids moved with practice hurry through the long quarters as they prepared to perform or prepared everything to perfection. Whilst in the basement, vans filled with the best delicacies from across the empire unloaded the precious cargo, wine from Veneto, grapes from Athens, coffee from East Africa, and many, many others in preparation for the grand banquet, even though Greece is no longer with us. The next day, the Romanian monarch arrived in Rome. While the governments of the two nations started talking about alliances, treaties, and incentives, the two monarchs retreated into Umberto's private city to talk about more delicate business. Everyone knew that the one holding up the true power in Romania was the king, and that's exactly where Umberto II came in. He believed his Michael was a moderate heart, and strongly admired his Italian counterpart for having managed to restore democracy to his country. With that enough effort, he could be set on the same path. When both kings were seated, a coffee on the small table sat before them. Umberto smiled courteously and went toward his guests. Dear Michael, he began, there is so much we have to talk about. The meeting lasted well into the evening, but when the two heads of state presented themselves to the press, everyone could notice Umberto's triumphant smile and their joint declaration about common views and the crown ultimately serving the people. It left little room for doubt on the meeting's results. The coffee must have been incredibly good. Oh, can I get a sip of that? I, I like more coffee. I already finished mine. <sighs> but anyways, since it's nothing's happening here, so we just probably close that out. Um, fun the project, my friends. Better guns? Oh, yes, please. Always research better guns. Can we hire a guy named Werble the Third Esquire? I think that would be... I've heard he does good work. Good, good, good. Um, what are we improving? Guns. Very nice. And when's the next one done? In a few days, so... Address a German threat. With our country closer than ever before, it's time we start planning the defense of our new alliance from those who would like to see it shattered. Of course, I'm talking about those gosh darn Germans. They've always tried to divide the European countries so they wouldn't present a threat to them, but now that the Reich is weaker than ever before, we are much more than a mere nuisance with all of our allies, and so they are ten times more likely to try and resort to violence to ensure their tenuous hold over Europe doesn't break entirely. With their industry supplying modern weapons to the Romanian army, and their instructors in teaching the recruits and cadets the newest innovations on military combat and tactics, our armies will coordinate very well and enjoy defense plan against Germany will protect our shared borders and free up more men for the actual fight once it begins, of course. Well, 150 more political power. Holy bad words. Well, we're going to test our work then. Anything up north? No. All right. Oh, what is this? Oh, we get three more synth synthetic refineries? I don't know where that is, but let's do that. Tunisia? Yemen? I'm not even going to click and read what it says. I'm going to do it anyways, because we can. Followed with... SIM agents in the Carpathians. As per more confidential parts of our treaty with Romania, agents from the SIM will be deployed across the country to perform counterinsurgency operations and investigations against the Iron Guard and its fascist backers. The Romanian secret services are too small and underfunded to effectively accomplish anything, and until they are brought up to par, we'll take up the task of protecting Romania against its unseen enemies. The Carpathian Mountains, almost depopulated and severely lacking in infrastructure, are a hub of terrorist activity and most likely to be the main stronghold of the Iron Guard, and therefore... It should be our first concern to remove any fascist threat before the region falls into all-out anarchy or worse. We don't want anarchy here. Actually, how are we doing with trade? Uh, fuel obviously isn't very good, but, you know, it is what it is. As we're building, building... We're even... Wow, we've almost built up all of the infrastructure here in East Africa. This is great. I love it. Oh, oh, we can't build down here now. Oh, no. That's still with us, actually. Oh, let's take a look at this. That is beautiful. We're, we are in the OFN, Canada, USA, Iceland, Bulgaria, uh, what was Albania, Croatia, Hungary, hopefully Romania, England actually joined, which is not bad either. Uh, let's see what else. Obviously our puppet states, you know. Oh, the Africa Shield still exists. Um, South Africa? Oh, look at that. Who think it still exists, huh? Well, that sucks. SIM agents in the Carpathians, and we'll end with the completion of the last focus on this part of the Romanian tree, so that's not too bad. Australia. Oh, 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 that was in the update, wasn't it? And could, instead of the Co-Prosperity Spheres, now the Dai Toa Koyo Ken? Oh, boy. 
Hey, regardless, Latin Brothers reunited with its government fully democratic and its civility restored after the annihilation of the last fascist rebels. Romania is ready to face the world on a clean slate. As a sign of gratitude for help in this daunting task as a request for continued friendship in the years to come, our diplomats have reached a final agreement for a comprehensive and formal alliance. In a grand ceremony at the Quirinal, King Alberto II of Italy and King Michael of Romania will officially sign the treaty between our two countries, which will include not only economic and potential cooperation, but also the promise to intervene militarily should any of the two signatories come under attack. As the German swastika looms over the horizon, and the free Latin world is united and ready to stand against the fascist menace. Very good, whether they like to or not. Yeah, I don't know if I like this name. I know Pax is looking pretty good. Oh! Masanosuke. Not looking too bad. I really hope that Muscovy reforms, but Muscovy, or, you know, Mus well, there's Muscovy, but Muscovy reforms, but actually, uh, there was a place, is all these places Italian? Southern Italian. This place over here is what? Northern Italian. Oh, Provencial. Oh. Okay, interesting. And what else can we do? Invest? Might as well. Improve Italy. I like that, but let's invest in Palestine. Or prospect in Palestine. Look at all this. It's so good. Palestine has unknown reserves. Oh, we gotta get that blood money. Blood oil, I mean. Blood oil. Agents and SIM Carpathians. Latin Brothers reunited. Which we can invent for that too, probably. Oh yeah, we've done there too, in part of Turkey. And we shall do one more focus, shall we? We shall go ahead and do Highways for the Nation, as we are building up more infrastructure anyway, so. Highways were the first built during, the f during fascism as part of Mussolini's grandiose infrastructure project. Unlike most of them, however, the highways are actually very useful, linking our long mountainous roads from Turin to Milan and Trieste from Milan to Rome and Naples. With the expansion of our empire, we should expand the highway system so it includes the Coral, Corat, Adriatic Littoral, and the Libyan Littoral, greatly helping the Italian communities in those once distant lands. Finally, we shall group all the highways under a single unified authority, creating Autostrades per Italia, a publicly managed company tasked with managing, maintaining, improving, and expanding our highways so that they always function at least at the highest possible efficiency, which I know I think I've already read that one, but it's alright. Uh, from now, I'm just going to train you guys just because we got to get at least slightly more army XP, right? 0.07 is not very much. We're going to do what we can, though, about it, so. Beautiful. Ah. Uh. Finally, we're building more roads. And no debt. Very good. 90 billion. In the next episode, we should be able to hit 100 billion in terms of GDP. But then again, it's almost 1969. Nice. But we'll see what happens. I would like to see, read the event, though, for the Latin Brothers. Because there should be one, since we're getting Romania on our side. Now, I'm going to ignore France, because nothing ever really happens with France. So, it is what it is. Ooh. Numerical superiority. A roll consolidation. Followed up with. Oh, there's that. And actually, air doctrine, can we do this one as well? Maximize sword damage, tactical bombers. Uh, I don't really use either one. Strategic bombing, I really don't ever use. Escort efficiency might not be bad, so let's go with this one. And hopefully, we get an event. But let us. Ah! Oh! Wait, they can still go to war? Okay. Okay. <sighs> Oh god, I was going to panic there a little bit. Um, they they were in our faction, and then Jim, Jimmy just took them out. And I thought, sure, can, can, can Shore still go to war? Um, okay, then I was not expecting that. Okay, so we got rid of Bulgaria, but we got Romania in here instead. Okay, so the threat still might be on, but I bet this is going to be. Yeah, I guess there's no event. And actually, oh, they went with Harold Wilson, which some people do want me to play as. So. I guess we'll end the episode here then. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this long video. If you did, leave a like. Really do leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we'll hit the 1970s and maybe watch the world collapse with an oil crisis. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.